I am Tariq Nasheed, ladies and gentlemen. And we are going to chop up some good game on tonight's Twitter space, waiting on everybody to come on in. Everybody give the space a retweet. That would be nice. If you can do that, that would be great. Retweet the space. Let everybody know we're live. Let everybody know we're live, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I won't be on too long. I always say that, and I end up here for two hours, but I'm not going to try to do that tonight. I'm going to try to get to the point. If you guys can hear me, let me see a black fist or a black hand. If you can hear me, good. If you can hear me and everything is clear, let me see a black hand, ladies and gentlemen. And um, then I'll know I'm doing good. All right, so listen, this is what we're going to talk about. Then I'll take some calls from people because you know there's going to be some, you know, there's going to be a few tether calls. You know how that goes. But nonetheless, as you know, we got a big reparations movement going on right now. The reparations movement is very heavy. It's very serious. It's not going anywhere. All right. We have not had a reparations movement going this strong for decades. I mean, it's been a long time since we've had this momentum where we are making the politicians discuss reparations. They're not going to be in a position to use the benign neglect policy, meaning they just will sit here and ignore us and then blend us in with everybody. See, we're not going for that. That's why us acknowledging our foundational black American culture that has shaken the apple cart, ladies and gentlemen, they were not ready for that. That was something that we should have been doing a long time ago, because now that we've designated and we've made an understanding of who we are as far as our lineage, enough of us are doing that. They don't really have no other plans. Because the name of the game was to keep us on this kumbaya. We are the world. We are a minority coalition. And we were supposed to be the only ones upholding this bogus coalition that doesn't exist. While everybody else leeches off of the coalition and we get nothing out of it. We flipped on everybody and we said we're not going to join or participate in anything unless we as foundational black Americans get something out of it. We're going to have to get something tangible. We're not doing symbolic gestures. We got to get some tangibles out the game here. So now a lot of people are running around whining and crying because we've gotten on code, which we should have been on code a while ago. They've done some market research and they see the numbers are real. They see that we're not running out here about to support any of these Democrats or Republicans. We already don't rep um, support Republicans in large numbers, but they're doing market research and they see we're not supporting the Democrats. And they have measures now where they're trying to push a bill where they're going to punish people for not voting. Have y'all seen that? We've circulated that on social media. They're talking about putting together a bill, fining people, giving people a fine if they do not vote. These are desperate Hail Mary plays, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to point to something in particular. Out there in Arizona, you have some of these politicians, these left-wing politicians. They're running around here talking about reparations, how they make it, they're making a pledge to support reparations for black people. Black people have been done wrong and we're going to make a pledge and they got like some little reparations coalition out there. And I don't think there is one foundational black American on it. Not one out there in Arizona. None of those politicians from what I see are foundational black American. They have a couple of black ones and they're Nigerian and Caribbean and they're talking about, yeah, we support, we make a pledge to support reparations. We got to watch the trick language because they're not talking about numbers. Let's be clear. And I, I want to talk about these fake reparations bills and measures that's 
being circulated now because what happens is people come out here talking about yeah we support reparations oh yeah we're all for it just vote for us and we're gonna we're gonna keep supporting reparations no 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 you guys are already elected so how about some money right now and i want black folks to understand the game don't go for the trick bag these people many of them are already in office we're not going to play that game where we keep supporting you and you're going to dangle the reparations in our faces. No, no, no. Get to throwing that money now. There's enough Democrats in office, all of you people talking about you support reparations. Get to supporting it by paying them out. Let's see that paper. Reparations is not going to be this endless carrot that they continue to dangle. Start cutting them checks right now, especially in Arizona. Again, I was in Arizona recently. Do y'all know all the things they give to the Native American tribes out there in Arizona? They got acres upon acres of land, casinos, schools, businesses. They don't pay taxes. Got their own police. Got their own hospitals and schools man they got a just a smorgasbord of goodies they give tangibles to them they're not sitting up here talking about yeah we support you no 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 they cut checks y'all cut them checks to foundational black americans and another thing too i i noticed whenever we talk about reparations on some of these spaces there's a lot of black folks who start acting scared of money. Have y'all noticed that on some of these spaces when we start talking about reparations? Because now we're making some serious strides here. We're making politicians, they're forced to address reparations. And these are power moves. And I think this scares a lot of black folks, usually older black folks, because we start doing these spaces and then we hear them call up, well, we get some reparations. It should be about no cash. That that fiat money. Oh, Lord, no, Lord. That cash money ain't going to be worth nothing in a few years. Now, that's fiat money right there. What we need, we we, 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 we need to let white folks know how, how tormented we are as far as our spirit and all of that silly nonsense. Negroes get scared. Let's be real. There's a lot of scared Negroes out here. We need y'all to sit down and not get in the mix. Scared Negro time is over and truth and reconciliation time is over. A lot of black folks want to sit around here and not get no money, but sit here and get pats on the head from white people. I'm not interested. Y'all go sit in the goofy corner, as my brother Nipsey used to say. No, no, I'm not trying to sit here and explain to white people how badly I've been aggrieved and they know they did it. So look, no more tears. Uh, it's time to get the paper going. Ain't no emotions in this. This is all about logic and paper. When we have meetings, when we have these discussions publicly, black people, please stop with the emotions Stop with I, I don't want us sitting here explaining how bad we've been. They know we they know how bad we've been mistreated. Black folks want to sit here and cry to the white people. No, no, no. Y'all start cutting these checks. See, when you wipe them tears up and you start talking logically, that's when you can get some stuff done. Because all of that whining and crying, the white folks know, oh, oh, he just wants a hug. Oh, we don't have to give him nothing. All this Negro wants is me to give him a pat on the head and acknowledge him. And give them a nice, good old mayonnaise hug. And usually that's the case. If you go to these protests out here, when you see these protests, people are protesting the death of a black person. And you got these goofball Negroes out here twerking and all that. You see the white people show up hugging and dancing right with them. And that just warms these Negroes hearts just to have the white people come out and dance with them and hug on them and sing with them. And then they go back to their segregated neighborhood or suburb and you go back to the projects with mayonnaise smell on your clothes all right now let me get some folks in here let me let me get the family to chime in here we got a quite a few people in here all right y'all raise your hands Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get on here and chop it up with Mr. Tariq Nasheed, ladies and gentlemen, let's get Abdul 
in here. Let's get Abdul in here. All right. Abdul, hop on in here. Abdul. Let me turn my phone up just in case I can't hear Abdul. Abdul. And then we'll get, we got a white supremacist in here, FBA Becky. This is a white supremacist troll. I would like to hear. It must be a white man, probably. FBA Becky. Hop on, FBA Becky. It's probably a white supremacist, dude. FBA Becky, turn your microphone on. FBA Becky, you trying to do this? What's happening? FBA Becky, turn your microphone on, FBA Becky, please. If you're going to stand on it, stand all the way on it. Commit to the trolling. Turn your microphone on, FBA Becky. You're throwing your little white hands up, but you're not trying to speak. Don't be scared to speak. If you make a profile like that, you better stand 10 toes down on it. All right. You're using the N-word all in your thing. Come on. Get on here now and use all that. All right. Let's get, um, who is this? Dude, I don't even know what your name is. What's up, bro? Hey, Tariq. Uh, I'm curious. Um, oh, slow down. I'm curious for you to slow down. Now, what's your name, man? Uh, John. John. John, you're a white man from where? Uh, no, I'm not white. But What, what um, are you? What are you? Uh, it's Hispanic. Hispanic. Okay, that's white, man. All right, but I'm just curious for, in terms of reparations. <laughs> okay, Hispanic, what do you, from, what do you, Hispanic from where? What, uh, let me just finish my questions real quick. Hold I'm just on, curious, hold like, on, what, what would your on, number be? Hold on, hold on. I just want to establish who I'm speaking with, sir. You're Hispanic from where? Texas. Hispanic from where? Texas is not Spanish. Hispanic from Oh, where? Spain. Well, yeah. You're from Spain? Yeah. No, you're not from Spain. Okay. Uh, well, where are you from? Stop being ashamed of where you're from. Are you from Mexico? Spain? Are you from Mexico? <laughs> no, I'm not. Where are you from? Spain. You're not from Spain. Why are you ashamed? First of all, because I don't really want nobody asking me a question and you're too ashamed to specify where you're from. Now, why are you ashamed of where you're from, sir? Tariq, um, I don't know how to prove this to you're you. You're not but... from Spain. Spanish people don't really have to immigrate here. Where are you from? <clears throat> so, Tariq, my and question is... And you don't is... have a Spanish accent, okay? So, so... Let, no, because, no, because you're, you're already acting in bad faith, sir. I'm just curious. I'm, what would, what would the number be? I'm just curious. There's, there's a, there's okay, a lot. I'm just curious why you There's a lot are of in, people if, analyzing it, could, it should be like a million. It should be as little as 10,000. I'm okay. just curious. What the fact that you're immigrated over here from some third world country that you're ashamed of, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. You shouldn't question me. You're not at liberty to question a foundation of black American about the numbers. Just be happy you're over here and we built a country for you, sir. You feel me? All right, get out of here. You don't get to question me, and you're too ashamed to talk about where you're from. No, 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 no. You don't ask me nothing about the money that we are supposed to get as foundational black Americans. I'm not crunching numbers with a damn tether who's ashamed of where he had to flee from and up here lying about he's from Spain. You're not from Spain. You don't have a Spanish accent, and Spanish people generally don't immigrate here. <sighs> Let's try some other people. FBA Becky, are you still um, just sitting here watching from the outside, and you want to participate? FBA Becky, turn your microphone on. Uh -oh. You're not going to turn your microphone on, FBA Becky? All right. Well, FBA Becky, I'm going to have to get you up out of here. You got five seconds to turn your microphone on, and I'm just going to kick you out the room. Let's try it now. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. 
Now we're going to get your little wet dog smelling self up out of here. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to remove you altogether. I'm going to block and remove you so you can't participate. So you're just going to have to be in that trailer park all alone. Left to your own smells. All right, let's get Arthur in here. Arthur in here. Arthur, let's get in here, man. Arthur? Hello? Okay, what's going on, uh, Mrs. Arthur? What's your name, ma'am? Uh, Lisa. Lisa, okay. Lisa, where are you from? Uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, you're, you're a white woman. Are you, a, you sound very young. How old are you? I'm 22. Oh. I'm not white. Okay, what are you, ma'am? I'm black. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you're black. What part of Pennsylvania are you from? Oh, Philly. You're from Philly? Ma'am, you are not from Philadelphia. And you're... Well, I'm not there now. But I'm in New York now. Ma'am, that's not a Philly accent that you have, ma'am. I was born in Philly, and now I live in New York. You have neither a Philly or a New York accent, and you say you're black? Yes, I'm black. <laughs> Okay, let me ask you this. What type of seasoning do you put on baked chicken? Uh, like salt and pepper. You are. And, and what else? Uh, sometimes onion powder. You white, <laughs> white as hell. <laughs> no, I'm not. You white as hell if you don't stop. <laughs> no, I'm black. I'm sorry. Who raised you? Black. Were, were you raised? Who raised you? Oh, uh, my mom. What's your, she's black. Your mom is black. What's your dad? Um, uh, he's a oh, white Hispanic. Oh, okay. 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 So your mother's a bed wench. Um. <laughs> I mean, I mean, something was going on. Somebody wasn't raping you, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So what's on your mind? What's on your mind, ma'am? Um. Wait, well, does it have to be like the actual topic? No, no, no. Or you can, you can ask anything, ma'am. Um, I wanted to talk about a recent case that I heard about. It's not recent, but I heard recent news about mm -hmm. it. It's about Daniel Holtzclaw. It's about who? Oh, uh, that cop. Daniel Holtzclaw. Daniel yeah, yeah, the one who was raping black women. Yeah. Yes, what about him? Um, I actually did some recent um research on it and i actually think he may be innocent uh -oh. uh, because of the dna it was it was uh advertised as being a vaginal dna but they never actually did he's not innocent DNA. several people accused that man of rape they found one woman that they they said she recanted, and now they're trying to build a case around that. All of those people didn't get together and lie on that dude. He, there were other women that he raped that he wasn't even convicted for. These were just a few women that he raped that he was convicted for, ma'am. So you think that man is any way remotely innocent? Yeah, I don't think it happened the way the media portrayed it. I think... It was this cop who was trying, who was just trying to get sex from them and was making fake promises about getting their warrants off. That's and I say that. That's, that's and right. I say, that's right. And I, say, and I say that because of the, one of the victims told their mom that uh, she met a hot cop and it was like a 911 call that mentioned this. And ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am, are you trying to justify this man sexually assaulting all of those black women? I don't think he did. Okay. So all of those black women were lying? No, I think the detective work was really sloppy and um, they didn't like they didn't like collect the DNA evidence the way that they should have. So that would mean all of those women are lying, right? No, I think the detectives 
coerced into doing that for money. So the detectives made them lie. Yeah. Why would they do that? Why would they break the blue wall of silence? I think he was a white sacrifice. And I think he was doing something that he shouldn't have been doing. I think he was slumming with these women. I think he was saying, making fake promises like, oh, I'll take your warrants off if you do something for me. But the media is making it seem like he was threatening them, like he was stalking them and you threatening that, them. That's, that's called rape, ma'am. That's still rape. Oh. That's rape. That's rape. That's rape. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I disagree, but I do think that's 200 rape. years and, and you clearly, is hard. And you clearly, and you are clearly not a black woman if you're sitting here justifying this man raping black women. You are clearly not a black he woman. He didn't rape them. I don't think he did. And ma'am, why did and you're you're operating in bad faith, ma'am? Why did you have to lie about your nationality? I didn't lie. I'm am black. You no, know, you're not. A black woman wouldn't sit here and justify other black women getting raped, no matter how much of a bed wench or a mammy she was. I'm not a bed wench. No, you're a white woman. You're a white no, woman. No, I'm not. <laughs> and you no, sound I'm like not. a suspected white supremacist, ma'am. No, I'm not. I swear to God, I'm not. Ma'am, you're not a black woman at all. Yes, I am. And I think I'm FBA on my no, mom's side, on my no, grandfather's no, side. No, yes, you're not. I am. no, you're not, ma'am. You are a white Hispanic. You're not FBA. No, no I'm not. Sitting, I don't sitting here just a, yes, your ma'am, go make you a nice mayonnaise sandwich <laughs> and, and, and enjoy your night, ma'am. Get off my oh. phone. Get your ass off my phone. You're not going to sit here justifying the rape of black women. You damn degenerate. All right, let's get some other people on here. Sick bastards. Okay. Um, who are these people? Let's get Kang. Who is Kang here? Some Italian dude. All right, what's up, Kang? Yo, what's up? What's up with this? Is this the white boy who tries to sound black? No. Nah. I'm a foundational no. Italian American. The foundational Italian? Yeah. No such is no such thing as the foundational Italian American. Well, there's no such thing as foundational black Americans, but the hell it I don't ain't. burst yes, your bubble, you know. Because I uh, know there's no bubble to bust. I'm not an immigrant like you, sir. I didn't flee. You did. What country did I flee? Italy. But I was born here. But your family fled. No, they built America. Oh, man, they couldn't even build a pizza shop, sir. They fled and they came here. They didn't build anything, sir. So what'd you build? I, I built a place so you can come over here and eat ravioli and smell like wet dogs, sir. That's what <laughs> I, I think you... Okay, that was good. That's I think you I think built uh, Popeye's, bro. A lot. Oh, sir. Pop, first of all, Popeye's is delicious. Yo, let's it's be kind of very good, clear. Bro. There's a lot of fat in now, it. Pop I, it's kind of disgusting. I don't know why you niggas like it. Popeye's delicious, sir. And you know what else like niggas? Yo, Italian women. They like nigger penis all up in them, sir. And that's why you're mad. Why am I mad? You're I'm pretty calm. Yes, you're, no, you're not. You're very mad, sir. You're passive aggressive. You're black like men. you're like a black sea uh, from my... Oh, sir, stop it. You're mad because brothers be digging up in them thick Italian women and y'all hate it, don't you? I can smell the bussy coming from you, bro. Sir, that's from your granddad. That's from your granddad, Mr. Pasquale. He smelled like Badusi and spaghetti sauce. Okay. Listen, I know you're mad at me. Um, I used um, to sir, sir, come on. You better come with some better trolling than that. Come on now. Come on, Chef Moist RD. Come on, buddy. You better do better. Listen, bro, I'm just trying to, like, cleanse myself, you know, like... I okay, just... okay, sir, you white supremacists are boring. Get new material. All right, let's get some more people in here, okay? Because if you're going to troll, at least be creative. I'm not trying to hear weak goofball trolling. All right? You white supremacists are so weak, you fail at even trolling. Like, damn. You guys, no wonder you need a system of welfare, which is white supremacy, to support you. You fail at everything on an individual basis. Lord. All right, let's get um, let's get Dante. We got another person here with some foreign flags. Dante, hop in here. Hi, Tariq. How you been? What's up, man? Have you been on here before, Dante? Yeah, of course. I just wanted to say... um. 
I think your I think your Twitter feed has gone significantly more enjoyable, and I think you and I probably agree on more than I initially thought. So no, I just wanted to say, like, even though we definitely differ in a lot of ways, um, I've just been following you, and I think there's a, a lot of issues you call out that are. Yeah, I think we'd find common ground. I'm trying to look for them, but oh, just wanted to say there you. Go. Okay, there you go, Dante. I don't even remember who Dante is, to be honest. So I'm not going to even front. I don't remember who he is. I kind of think I talked to him before, but whatever. All right, Dante. Hedgley. Let's get Hedgley on here. Tariq, I love your content. What's up, Hedgley? Where you from, brother? Hedgley? Oh, he bounced. Okay. I guess that Uber call came in real quickly, so he had to go. All right, let's get um Jalil Jai, whatever your name is. I can't pronounce your name. What's good, man? But you what's gotta... good, bro? What's up? What's up, brother? What's your name, uh, sir? Jai. Jai, where you from, Jai? I'm from Texas. You from Texas? Yeah, I'm from Texas. All right, what's on your mind, Jai? Just reading the title. I agree with what you're saying. We need to watch out for those phony reparation bills. No doubt. All right. Thank you so much, Jai. All right. Let's get um come on. We got a lot of folks in here. Let's get uh, let's get Marlo in here. Marlo, let's get Marlo to chop it up. Marlo, hop in, ma'am. Hop on, Marlo. Peace and uh peace and love flex. Uh I just want to be brief and talking what the author chick was talking about. Uh, it's kind of disgusting. I saw on my Twitter feed that people were making uh, clubhouses about uh, black women's womb should be going to trans women. That was, yeah, that was that was highly sick. Um, I just want to say, sisters, like y'all need to. I need to say y'all, but um, it's not indicative to everybody. But y'all need to have close relationships to black men because that's like just the fact that they having clubhouses about that was just so highly like disturbing to me. Just in all, in all. Like four fronts. That's all I wanted to say, Flex. I don't want to take my baby time. No doubt, man. Much respect, family. Much respect. All right. Y'all, y'all throw some hands up. Let me know if you're in here. We chopping it up. Who is this racist incel? Okay. All right. We have a racist incel in here. That's his name. Racist incel. So speak up on it, racist incel. Racist incel. Turn your microphone on. Hi. What's going on, ma'am? I actually wanted to ask you something. Okay, but before we do that, let's establish who you are, sir. Where are you from? Nepal. Nepal? Yeah. Okay, are you still there now? Or are you in the United States? I'm in Nepal. Nepal, and that's India, right? No, it's a different state. Where where is Nepal? Where is that? It's on the northeastern side of India. North, okay, okay. Right, so what's on your mind? I wanted to ask you, what do you think about Israel? I don't really think about it. Um, I have so many issues here. Israel is kind of the last thing on my mind, to be honest. Really? What do you yeah. think about like influence of Jewish politicians like in the American race divide? Do you think that black people in America are somehow, you know, oppressed by the banking system in America, which mostly Jews perpetrate? Well, the police stations are not run by Israel and police agencies around America are loaded with white supremacists. Do you think Israel has something to do with that? I think that there was like a period of time where the police in America was militarized. I think it was because of the war that the United States partook in. I think that Jews caused those wars. So did Israel cause your country to be colonized by Britain at one point? No, Nepal was never colonized. That was just India. Okay. But you do understand that the Western powers still control your economy all over in that area right now. You do understand that, right? Yeah, I mean, banking systems from America controlled by Jewish people control basically the entire world, right? Mm -hmm. But there are Jewish people from Ethiopia 
who's going over to Israel now, and they're complaining about racism. So what do they control? How come they're not controlling anything? They don't control nothing. Well, I don't really think like you can verify their claims. Um, you can verify their claims because there are several lawsuits claiming that systematic white supremacy is happening to black Jewish people in Israel. There are several news reports. There are several lawsuits. Are those people lying, sir? I actually agree to that. I don't think that Ashkenazi Jews consider African Jews to be legitimate Jews. I think that they have a certain core, you know, ethnic demographic profile that they're trying to protect, and they're trying to exclude Africans from that. Oh, so it's more racism. No, it is racism. It's racism by Ashkenazi Jews to non-Ashkenazi Jews. Okay, so what's the difference between the non and the legitimate Ashkenazi Jews? Well, the Ashkenazi Jews, I guess, they, like think that the African Jews aren't like legitimate or something. They think that they're, they're the real ones, you know, they're God's chosen people. And they're the real ones controlling like the banks, they're controlling the media, everything, government. And the African ones don't really have that much power. Oh, so we're running right back into white supremacy. So the problem... It's actually is, Jewish supremacy. Okay, no, because you just verified that the black Jews are completely powerless. So that means it's not a religious thing. Based it's on both a religious body. and an ethnic thing. It, no, sir, you just verified it's not a religious thing because if it was based on religion, the black Jews would still be as powerful as these other white Jews you're talking about. And you just acknowledge that they're not. So that means it is not about religion. It's about race. It is about race, but the Ashkenazi Jews aren't actually white, right? I mean, they're kind of related to Europeans. Okay. They don't come under like, traditional okay. classification of the Aryan race. Okay, so if there were, how could I recognize a Jewish white person from an Anglo white person? What's the difference physically? How would I recognize that if I saw either well, one? Jewish is a religious classification, but like it's also a racial classification, right? Okay. There's a lot of people. Racial classification. How do I differentiate between a white Jewish person and a white Anglo person? Well, I guess like there's a lot of white people, like Aryan people, like how they're classified, who converted to Judaism. But most Jews, I guess, are like racially Jewish. Like they have certain Jewish surnames. They have I'm certain physical features. I'm, I'm asking you again. If I saw them, how would I know the difference if I saw a group of them standing next to a group of Anglos? How would I or you a as question. a non-white person, how would we know? Well... I've been always a fan of the feature of the nose. I think the nose is a good pal. If the they have like a weird pointy nose that bankers have, they're usually Jewish. Okay, Sarah Michelle Geller is an actress who's Jewish. She doesn't have a pointy nose, so that won't work. Is she like pure Jewish? I don't know how much. Is there levels to the Jewishness, sir? I'm, I don't know. I'm learning some things. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm learning to. I think there's like, you know, I guess she can have certain non Jewish admixtures, but the purest of the pure Jews, the most kosher Jews with the most shackles, generally tend to have a very cartoonish nose. Oh, okay. So we have to look for people with big noses. Exactly. The Germans said that earlier in the 1940s, I believe. Okay. But I know big nose East Indians. So do they have some Jewish in them that we don't know about? Is based no, on I think it's like, I mean, some people who are not Jewish can have it as well, but if they look, you know, kind of like Middle Eastern with the nose and all, if they have like weird hair and a hat, they're definitely Jewish. A weird hat. Yeah. <laughs> you can ask Ben Shapiro about that. Okay. Okay. So, if we're dealing with people based on religion... Why did so many Jewish people get killed if they are in a supreme position over the white people? Get killed? How? In the Holocaust, sir. There was a Holocaust against Jewish people. If they were supreme over the white people, why did so many of them get killed? 
Well, that's an interesting question. Um, the Holocaust, right? I mean, it was see, World War Two lasted like what six years, wow. and if you calculate how many hours there were, if you calculate, you know, like how many people the Nazis could have, you know, exterminated. Okay. okay, let's try it again. Come on, because your trolling is getting boring. Come on, man, you got to be interesting with your trolling. Don't just babble. So. If they were supreme, why did so many of them get killed, sir? Well, I think that I don't think it's mathematically possible that the ones, you know, like six million of them got killed. Oh, okay. So you're saying that the Holocaust was a hoax? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's to establish a sort of, uh, you know, supremacy of guilt over other op- oppressed people like Africans <laughs> and Indians. Got it. Okay, okay. So you're East, basically East Indian. Um, your no, fam- no, I'm, I'm South. I'm South. I'm like the Indian kind. My ethnicity is Metal right, Brahmin. I'm right, not really like the Chinky right. kind. Got it. But Gandhi. So were you? Are you supportive of Gandhi? I, I support some of his uh, theory. Okay. So do you agree with some of the rhetoric over there about black people? Do you think that black people are genetically inferior, sir? No, I think they're genetically superior in some ways. How so? Well, on a physical level, I think they have a lot of testosterone. You see a lot of these runners like Usain Bolt. Uh, I think it's genetics that plays, you know, a huge hand. Like, I don't think any one of any other ethnicity can run as fast as Usain Bolt. Okay, okay. we're talking about mental capacity. Do you think, because you're a smart guy, do you think your people over there in Nepal, India, you think they are mentally superior to black people? Not, I mean, I guess it depends on the caste, right? I mean, I'm a Brahmin. I have a good IQ. I don't think I have the same IQ as, let's say, someone from Africa. But I think the lines of socioeconomic class kind of get blurred. I don't think I would match up with like an educated black man like you. So who would you match up with as far as your genetic superiority? I don't think I have genetic superiority. I'm just like kind of smart. I'm not Ted Kaczynski smart. I'm just like, you know, just surface level (laughs) smart. I'm mm-hmm. just like um, regular good IQ, one twenty, whatever. That's right. all. That's as far as the genetics goes. Got it. Got it. And it's very interesting. And I, I want. I'm letting you talk for a reason because I want my my black folks here to listen to this minority coalition because you're you're using a lot of talking points from the white supremacists over at 4chan and and Stormfront. Every talking point you're using, you're kind of mixing it with trolling, but. That's to mask your real identity. And you have a lot of the views that the white supremacists have, which is very interesting. And I want black folks to understand this so that we'll understand that there is no minority coalition black people. See, there's a reason. Some of y'all are like, why are y'all letting this dude talk? I want y'all to understand this is your minority coalition. He's not just trolling. This guy sits up here and he believes a lot of these white supremacist talking points. This is why we don't have a people of color coalition. We don't have a minority coalition with these people. This guy on the phone is probably 10 shades darker than me. And he sounds like Richard Spencer. Do you understand foundational black American family? We don't have no coalition with these folks. I just want y'all to hear it. And I'm not going to yell at him or berate the guy. You know, that's what he believes. These are his his crazy views. And this guy identifies with the people that has oppressed his homeland. You understand? So us sitting up here trying to help all of the oppressed people, some of these people we can't do nothing with. We can't do a damn thing with them. Psychologically, they have been turned out. They're done for, man. We can't do nothing. We What coalition are we going to build with this guy? Remember, this guy's from the same part of town Kamala Harris is from. This guy's Brahmin. Kamala Harris's family is Brahmin, all right? I want y'all to understand that the vice president that some of you butter biscuit eating sambos was sitting up here ski weeing about when she got in office, this is where she's from. You want to know why she sat up here talking about what she ain't going to damn do for black people? This is why right there. That's why right there, ladies and gentlemen. All right. 
this real okay i think okay speaking of richard spencer this is the real richard spencer here all right <laughs> i i talked this guy hi uh mr nasheed how hello mr richard how are you sir how are you doing I'm, long time uh... no here well have we ever spoken before we yeah you yes Richard we've spoken before you've been on one of my broadcasts if this is the real this Richard is the real Spencer, Richard yes one hundred percent um yes remember we had a a brief debate on one of my live streams a couple of years ago oh, okay what were we talking about then what were we talking about you ran off the phone kind of quickly oh. so um yeah I don't know what we we're talking about but it's online you can find it online okay. no. Now, what's going on with you? You've been, they've, they've had you in hiding. Where have you been? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've kind of went against the uh, Trump 2020 election mainly. Um, I don't think I'm in hiding. I'm just uh, kind of doing my own thing and uh, focusing okay. on some other stuff at the moment, focusing on more intellectual stuff. I, I think the, um, the alt-right movement was, uh, you know, pretty intellectually bankrupt. And um, I, uh, I, I just want to be involved in things that are, you know, exciting and challenging to me and and just, you know, tweeting about Trump and stuff just uh, bores me to tears. So I'm just focusing yeah. on other stuff. But I, I think that probably I mean, it definitely is going to mean that I'm not in the spotlight, but that's uh, good in a way. But I, I've been enjoying the conversation, actually. I just popped in kind of on a whim. It's late over here, but um, it's a very real conversation. Right, right. Now, how do you feel about reparations, Richard? I mean, you you are the one who really helped start the alt right movement. I'm like, are you you could also be solely responsible for the alt right movement. Um, how do you feel about reparations for foundational Black Americans? Uh, I think it's a good idea, and I I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, I. I, I I don't. Yeah, I mean, I I think a lot of the um, rhetoric against reparations is um you know i i can agree with it here and there it's and, and so on but i yeah i mean i i understand that a i mean you could call it a crime you could call it a trauma it took place mm -hmm. and um there is you know it's hard to put a monetary value on something like that but um it can be done um and it just has to be done specifically i i think it's very difficult now um with immigration um, and including African immigration, it would be difficult to kind of, you know, if to, to say, are we just giving you money because you have a darker skin color or is right. this a real thing that is right. about people? That's who... why we were making it lineage based. We yeah. were making it based on people who were aggrieved here during slavery in America, people who are owed the 40 acres and a mule. Right. Yeah. So we made it very specific. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. And I, I kind of. I like the idea of um, what would I don't know. It's it's paying off a uh, debt. I think that's a much right. more serious way of thinking about something than, um, you know, than just kind of buzzwords about diversity and uh, and so on. So yeah, I, I I think it would be a better better use of uh, of resources. Now, would you say this if if the debt were paid in a to a substantial amount? Um, is that it? Is it a one-time thing or is it kind of an ongoing thing? It, it would be in the same vein of the, the Native American situation. You know, it's kind of, if you aggrieve a group, you have to, you know, compensate them for the aggrievement. The slavery, mm -hmm. one-time thing. We look at slavery, that was a 400-year torture endeavor. Right. So it wasn't a one-off. So there has to be a lot of repair there. To 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 make things equitable, we have to make things equitable. I know. I when I spoke with you, I know you said you like power. You believe in winning, and you yeah. know, you, know you, t you can't live in a society where you feel like you're winning over another group um, in perpetuity because you would have to pay for that militarily. You can't pay for military subjugation because not only will that create hostility, the money is going to run out. And then what are you going to do? You're going to be back at square one. So it's just best to be equitable when dealing with people. Wouldn't, wouldn't that make sense, Richard? It makes sense. I mean, to to put a little context around what I, you know, said, I, I think I, I'm sure I said something like that. Right. Um, I mean, one thing that I appreciate 
about you in this discussion is that it's it's serious advancement of your people. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think you you understand where I'm coming from, too, when I right. when I say, you know, say something about winning. That's kind of it's a kind of a Trumpian way of basically saying that. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I think if I had suffered uh, like you all had, I would have very similar feelings. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, it's funny cause I, I live out in the Pacific Northwest. I live in Montana, if you, as you, you might know. Yeah. Um, it's a different situation, um, with the American Indian or native American. And, um, it's been, it was dealt with in a very different way. It, um, the, uh, reservation system, you know, has some problems, but it, it is a continuing thing. I mean, when you, uh, when I, you know, drive through a reservation, you know, it's very apparent where I am. Yeah. And, oh. Yeah, but yeah, I, they got a lot. They of absolutely have a claim to a, a yeah. part of North America. Yes, they do. Well, they got a lot of land. They got a lot of casinos. So a lot of them are doing actually very well. Now, as far as a lot of stuff that's going on with your movement and a lot of movements of people, um, I, I would say on the far right, mm -hmm. but, but even on the left, as you know, as as many stories have come out, the numbers in the dominant society, white society, those numbers are dwindling. And I know that's a real legitimate concern for a lot of people who are part of your movement. And I don't dismiss that. That is a legitimate concern. Yeah. What do you think should be done or what could be done to help those numbers of uh, the, those birth rates that's going on in your community. What what legitimate tactics do you guys have, or what would you wish to have in order to assist with your genetic lineage going? Because I think people deserve to have their genetic lineages go on. I, I I'm not a person who's like, okay, yeah, the hell with your lineage. Yeah, if you want your lineage going, you you there are things that can be done to to protect that to a certain degree without systematic oppression. Right. What what do you think would work in your eyes? Well, it's interesting because I mean if we if we go back to the Trump era, if the 2016 Trump, not the 2020 Trump, but the 2016 Trump, it was existential. And even notions like the wall, it was a kind of visual notion of we're going to protect white America effectively. Right. And I do think that's how it resonated. And, you know, actually as a, as someone who's a black nationalist, you know, of, of a sort, that's probably a fair description of you. Um, it nationalist, just um, somebody who's trying to empower the black. Sure. But, yeah. but... Um, I, I think it, it, it could resonate with your community as well. Um, I, uh, but, you know, at the same time, even long before the Trump movement of 2016, I was relaying an important fact that is really undisputed, that can't be disputed. And that is that um, white America is going to end regardless of a wall, regardless of a total immigration shutdown. I mean, the majority of births are to non-white mothers as right. of 2011. So yeah. we're well past that. And we, we even have this kind of, you know, terrible situation now um, of uh, of immigration is kind of petering out. Um, you see the birth decline in places like Mexico. Uh, and then I can even take it to another level. I mean, I was looking at some stuff just this afternoon pretty casually with a friend of mine who's visiting. And um, the, the birth rate among... Um, People with college degrees, people with graduate degrees, um, it's below replacement. It's significantly lower than people who have not completed high school. Yeah. And that's a real thing. I mean, you, you're you the product of your mom and dad. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, again, I, I don't have it out for those people in this at all. But, um, it, you know, it's I, I want people who've gotten master's degrees and are doctors and lawyers and so on to be um, having children. And so it's a, it's a difficult situation and it's even worse in a way um, due to um, kind of degenerative effects 
in, in, in terms of breeding, we want to use that word now. I mean, we're, we're breeding for heart disease effectively. We're mm -hmm. promoting congenital diseases through fertility and across all racial groups. Too. Yeah. That as my friend added, it's, it's true across all racial groups. So I, I think we're in a really serious situation and I don't, and I don't think there's been enough like outside the box thinking and discussions where, you know, we can, we can really talk about this seriously yeah. about what we can do. Right. Um, the movement now with all of the, sexual confusion with the trans this and the trans that how do you think that affects your community because they use black people they'll use us as the face of it to sell it but mm -hmm. ultimately a lot of that is done to undermine your numbers as well in the white community do you understand that i absolutely understand that yeah i mean I'm, i mean i think it's a terrible confusion in terms of identity and um you know, I mean, I, I think we're the, the way I would describe it, and this is going to get a, a little bit dark, I guess, is that we're we're in a bottleneck. And the people who are going to get out of this bottleneck, that is the people who are going to have a future and have children are going to be those who are either, to be frank, too stupid to care, you know, I mean, let's, let's, you know, they, they just have a kid because they were at some biker bar and they got knocked some girl up, you know, right. Right. or they're going to have a, a strong will to live. And they, they want a future. They understand what it means to have children and they, and, and those people will live the people who don't have that inborn passion um, won't survive. And so I, I think, I mean, the way you can think of it is, I mean, and I'm, I'm kind of calling upon my friend Ed Dutton on this, but I mean, in previous centuries before the industrial revolution and modern medicine and all these technological advances, child mortality was 50%. I mean, most children born did not live into adulthood. Right. And that, you know, we, we can't even imagine living in that time now, even if, if someone's if your child dies, oh, my gosh, that's the most traumatic thing you could imagine in, you know, previous centuries. That was the norm. And um, I, I think we've almost reached a new child mortality, a, a new type of child mortality where if you can survive this gauntlet and you 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 see like the gender confusion and deconstruction of identity, et cetera, and you just say no to it. So you have a will to live. You are going to have a future. Right. And I'm just going to be brutally frank, but the weak won't. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. But Richard, <laughs> man, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah. yeah good think, conversation. Yes, indeed, man. Um, more power to you, buddy. Be good. All yeah, right. likewise. That was Richard Spencer, the person who started the alt-right. And the thing about Richard, we can have a logical conversation with Richard. Hold on, let me, somebody's texting me. Hold on, hold on one second. Yes. Hold on one second. Uh, all right, sorry about that, guys. All right, so we have a lot of folks in here still. A lot of people in here still, ladies and gentlemen. You raise your hand if you want to chop it up. Okay. I know y'all hear all this buzzing and banking going on. All right, let's get um Freeze in here. Somebody named Freeze. All right, let's get Freeze in here. Freeze, hop on. We're waiting on Freeze to hop on here. Freeze, turn that microphone yo, on, sir. Yo. What's up, Freeze? What's going on, Tariq? Yo, it's Freeze, uh, foundational black American here. I'm out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. No doubt. What's on your mind, brother? Yeah, man, this is totally off the topic and or whatever, but uh, I just wanted to know if we ever going to get the MacBooks and audiobook. I want to hear them in your voice, brother. They, well, I, you can just go back and listen to the old Mac Lessons episodes. That's what y'all can do. But thank you for the call. Let's get um, 
Who's that? Ukrainian refugee. Some guy's name is Ukrainian refugee. Let's hop on, Mr. Ukrainian refugee. All right. Ukrainian refugee. Turn your microphone on, sir. Ukrainian refugee. Let's slide that microphone on, buddy. All right. While we're waiting on... You got it? You got it together? Uh, Ukrainian refugee. Yeah, hello? Are you able to... I can hear you a little bit. Yeah, you're going in and out. What's up, buddy? Um, So I only caught the last... Uh, part of that conversation there with uh, Richard Spencer. My my issue here is a lot of people, you know, especially the last few years, are talking about all of these hardships that we're supposed to be facing. Um, and we're talking about them from a sociological perspective where we assume that the weak are going to make it out, or I'm sorry, Right, the weak are not going to face um, all demographics. We're we're faced with environmental toxins to the point that, like our our genes have never. Experienced this before. Nobody's genetic lineage. Okay, but. Well, the your phone is genetically toe up, though. Your, well, your phone is genetically inferior. Okay. Um, are you in a place where you got good reception, sir? That phone is very janky. Are you able to hear okay. me better now? I mean, let me get some other people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you were going in and out. So. Okay. All so right. what I was what I was saying is, you know, a lot of people are talking about like genetically weak people aren't going to make it, and genetically strong people are going to make it, or people with a will to live are going to make it. The issue is that across all demographics and all races, nobody's genetics were prepared for generations of environmental toxins and microplastics in the water. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to like food in America, you can even be at a higher financial level and be able to afford things like organic food uh, and things that are a little less like poison for the body. But the issue is that even on American soil, our fields are so fallow that organic food grown here has about, I would say, 30% of the nutritional value of countries like Scandinavia. So people keep talking about the weak and the strong here, but we really do need to be start. We need to start talking about environmental factors. Uh, we we're, we have generations of degrading genetics, and it doesn't matter if you know smart people with a will to live, like doctors who are able to make a decent wage start breeding over you know people have a, a lower income and you know lower thoughts about how to raise a child this is something that I'm, I'm not seeing is entering this discourse as heavily and I think it's the primary aspect of if we're going to talk about who's going to survive if it's not your children it's going to be your grandchildren who start expressing genetic defects and it doesn't matter if you uh, if you have a child with somebody who has very good genes and you have very good genes nobody's genes were prepared for this level of environmental toxin mm -hmm. right and also not only some of the stuff that's given to us medically especially us black people particularly black women somebody put up a meme like the police are to black men uh, as what doctors are to black women the, the doctors in these hospitals, they terrorize black women medically. So we have, we do, you know, we have the environment and all that, but we as black people, we have a whole other set of issues that we have to deal with as far as genocidal targeting from the dominant society. So, you know, I get on the trees and the whales and the sharks after I deal with this white supremacist problem. We got a problem with white supremacy. We got race soldiers working in the damn police departments right now. When I get through, we finish dealing with that problem. 
then I eat an avocado wrap and, and scrape some tree bark off and, and eat some of that or whatever I need to do. But yeah, we got to get this white supremacy thing under wraps. Let's get some more people all up in here. Let's get, um, let me see, a lot of folks in here. Let me get some more folks in here. Let's get um, TBZ. TBZ. We're going to get TBZ in here. All right. TBZ. All right. TBZ, where you at? Hello, Brother Tariq. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? I'm good. I'm fantastic. And yourself? I'm good. What city are you in? Uh, I'm from Milwaukee, but I'm currently in Accra in Ghana right now. I'm just on vacation. Oh. Oh, so what's happening out there? How was it in Accra? Uh, It's nice. I mean, it's nice in Milwaukee. It's cold. (laughs) I mean, I get to hear about all the the crime and the... um, the car stealings that happen out there, and that's not too, that's not too good. Um, but um, the reason I was hitting you up is just kind of to piggyback off of what um, was that the Ukraine refugee was saying, um, how yeah. he was talking about no one's prepared for the toxins and this and that, and um, you know, quality of food in America. It kind of goes along with what you talk about all the time, which is the importance of traveling. You know, like I said, I'm out here, I'm yeah. out here in Ghana right now, but when I do come back to the states, I do put on weight every single time. It doesn't even matter, and I'm vegan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, wow. Like you're not supposed to get gas from eating a mango. You know what I mean? So I'm like, mm, what the hell is this? Yeah. So that's why when I come back, I keep my stays short, and then I'm, <laughs> I'm back out here. And then um, the air quality, um, even even the um, the way they were handling that uh, jab situation. You know what I mean? Every country handled handled it different. When I came back, I traveled all around the U.S. to visit my family because they're kind of spread out, and every single city I went to was so different. You know what I mean? So. Um, you kind of get an outside perspective on what's what's going on and get more get more of a holistic aspect of like what uh, everyone's media is saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, yeah, yeah, that's all I want to chime in and say, bro. And I appreciate what you're doing. I donated to the museum and uh, best luck to everything you do in the future. And with the young one coming. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate that. Much respect. Let's get C Morg. C Morgan. Whatever your name is, turn your microphone on, Simorg. Uh, yeah, hi, Tariq. How How's you doing? doing? What country are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, I'm from the Middle East, but I'm in uh, Africa at the moment. Oh, okay, where, where in the Middle East are you from? Uh, I'm from. Uh, from I, I'd rather not say, but uh, let's okay, say. okay, let's stop, stop. Where are you from? Okay, you're not okay, no, okay, no, Iraq, Iraq. Iraq. Okay, are you, yeah. are you from Iraq or are you just making something up? No, no, I'm I'm actually from Iraq. Okay, so what's yeah. going on? Yeah, I was actually um, listening in and um, it was very peculiar to hear you talk with Richard Spencer. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I think Richard, it's kind of funny that he's um, trying to act like he wasn't the gotten, you know, Nazi numero uno for years. <laughs> and he's just... Uh, regular pundit now with with regular opinions mm-hmm. uh but anyway uh it's, Richard is rebranding himself yes he's uh, rebranding himself yeah yeah it's it's <laughs> it's it's funny to kind of see that but um in terms of reparations i think it is i think it, it is a legitimate thing that needs to be uh that needs to be done um basically uh it's it's something that i think the details need to be discussed more on on how it's going to be distributed because I, 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 I think it's one of those things where anybody who follows this is kind of, and who's serious, kind of is in agreement that it is required. Um, just like any, any uh, person that is victimized is usually, um, you know, they're usually uh, compensated or in, in some way. Right. It should, it should, it should be the same thing with, with African, uh, African-Americans. But I'm saying I think the details for how it's going to be distributed, uh, I think I think they need to kind of be discussed more as well. Now, I, how I, do you, I know how it should be distributed. Now, how do maybe, you think it should be distributed to foundational black Americans? I haven't given it much thought, to be honest. And I don't know, maybe you have discussed it, but I, yeah. I ha- maybe I oh, haven't been following it closely. We, we want to distribute it, cash payments, the same way it's distributed to Native American tribes. They get cash payments, they get land mm-hmm casinos, tax-free status. They get all types of tangibles. So we want reparation. Mm-hmm. Same vein. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, got it we got it mapped out. 
Gotcha, gotcha. And then, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about also, I agree that the white supremacy issue, um, but I think what the Nepalese guy was talking about, I think that is actually also kind of uh, on the money in terms of, um, I think you should, I guess, kind of talk more about the Jewish aspect of it as well. Um, because I think a lot of times that is kind of ignored and dismissed. So I don't know. That's the, that why, might be my why, Middle Eastern part coming out. Right. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, no, that's it's not a religious thing. You're talking about Jewish people. That's a religious thing. That's a religious conversation. Well, we got yeah. a supremacy yeah. problem. Our problem is white supremacy. Yeah. Not Jewish supremacy, because Jewish people were killed in the Holocaust in large numbers. So you cannot scream if a group of people are killing you like that. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I agree. But it's more complicated than that sometimes, you know, it's there are. really not there... complicated. It is not complicated. It's very simple. Okay. Supreme means my group can kill your group and you can't do anything about it. And it can't be done the other way. Mm -hmm. That's is if a group of people can kill you, but you can't kill them, they are mm -hmm. supreme. You, it's that I got you. And then uh, you talked about the. I think one thing I also I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, the minority coalition. I hundred percent agree with you on this. This is one of the things I get really pissed off with the, especially the millennial, uh, millennial African Americans, thinking they're going to be able to just get along with every, uh, you know, freshly arrived minority, and they're going to act buddy buddy. And everything's going to be fine. That's not the case. Uh, they're not going to view African-Americans as uh, authentic Americans. They just don't. Uh, they're as racist, if not more, than uh, your fellow white uh, compatriots. Right. You know what I mean? So that's one thing that needs to be stressed because your generation gets this. But the younger generation, they're coming up in these schools. They live in metropolitan areas. Uh, they're they're kind of and they're you know brainwashed with all the you know daily propaganda that um, it's it's a beautiful rainbow coalition against the white people against white people basically right, right. which is not the case at all it's not it's not it's not equal uh, partners everyone you know caring caring for one another um, that's not the case it's it's every every group looking out for their group interests above above everyone else. Absolutely. Uh, everyone else's group interest. So that's something I think that I like hearing that because it's true. It's absolutely true. And it's it's kind of funny, uh, you know, seeing seeing how it's been kind of just, uh, um, pe you know, people have kind of been tricked into believing um, otherwise. So that's something else you mentioned, I think, was interesting. Now, are you in Nigeria right now? Uh, yes. Okay, you got a Nigerian flag now. Are you are you Nigerian? No, no, no. I'm not Nigerian. I'm in Nigeria. I've been. I I come and go in Nigeria. Okay, because yeah, uh, strange that you would have a Nigerian flag on your page. Yes, yes, yes. No, because yeah, living in Nigeria doesn't quite make you a Nigerian. But I'm hey. not Nigerian. I'm not Nigerian. But right. I, I I like Nigeria. I do oh, like Nigeria. There you go. I like Nigerian women as well. There you go. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. About to go there and trick off a little couple of them dollars i feel you all right. All right. <laughs> you be good yeah, he's over there doing some strange for a little piece of change yeah yeah i don't know what he like all right let's get some more people let's get um all right let's get b b hop on in here b b turn your microphone on b B, if you got a microphone, you can turn that microphone on, B, or I'm going to get you out of here. Then I'm going to get free speech for... Hi. Oh, there we go. All right, B? What's up, Eric? What's up, man? Where are you calling from? Uh, calling from H-Town. Calling from H-Town. All right, well, it sounds like you're calling from the planet Neptune, brother. It sounds like you are in a Mars rover right now. What kind of phone you got, brother? I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that, man. All right. Now, where you at right now, man? It sounds like you're at work. Where you at? I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually at work right now, man. I can tell. Man, get off that Burger King phone. You better be working <laughs> that drive through You got your Burger King headphones on trying to use it to make calls, brother. You know that ain't going to work. 
Right, 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 right. It's do, all good. Baby. Do y'all have the impossible burgers? Uh, do y'all have the impossible burgers over there still with onion rings? I think we do. I think we do, Tyree. There you go, my man. All right, brother, you be good. I know y'all calling on your job. Don't mess your money up. Get your paper. All right, we got a got a lot of folks up in here. Okay, we got Supremo, the white supremacist who always comes up in here. Hold on. Supremo, I, I'm not supposed to let you on since you always come in the room, Supremo. What's up, Supremo? Turn your microphone on, Supremo. This is the white supremacist troll. What's up, Supremo? Supremo? Hello? What's going on, Supremo? Well, What's on your mind, ma'am? Okay. Now, Supremo, how you going to call up with a raggedy phone from your trailer park? Okay. You spent all that money on meth, but you couldn't spend it on a prepaid card. All right, Supremo. Lord, Lord, the white folks like you are down bad right now, boy. Richard Spencer is right. Y'all ain't going to make it. The broke ones ain't gonna make it. <laughs> let's get um let's see who we got in here. Let's get Hover. Who is his brother? Oh it's, uh, Hover Hoverman Cop. Let's get Hoverman Cop. Let's get him in here. Hoverman Cop. Yes, yeah, sir. How you doing, sir? What's going on, brother? Where you going? Uh, from? Houston, Texas. All right, so brother, you were in law enforcement, right? That's correct. Um, for twelve years. That's correct. There you go. Now, what was your experience in law enforcement? Uh, well, uh, in the twelve years, of course, you know, uh, I got pushed out because uh, I I ran my mouth too much against things that wasn't supposed to be done. Uh, mm -hmm. Done right. Which happens all the time. That black officers are always getting pushed out for not going along with the damn abuse that they see. But what happened with your situation? Uh, well, you know, the the first thing I noticed, I'll never forget, my first year, um, I had I had to I had to go to a, a weapons call, and the guy was supposedly had a weapon inside the house. Well, he didn't have a weapon, and then I, you know, once we I detained the guy, uh, two other. Uh, uh, comrades came who was obviously white and uh aggressively handled him and i spoke out i spoke out against that and i almost got in some huge trouble so i knew then how to try to move differently but yeah you know and as as things got a, went along years went by you know I've, I've, I've always been different so i never was a part of the the, the clique and so I think the what finally broke the camel's back is when I spoke out against what happened in in Dallas with uh what's his name um, Ahmad uh was it uh, the guy in the in the uh in his apartment when he got uh yeah um Bokum John there you right? go right there you go yeah. so when that all went down and uh, you know I I I've, I've done everything you can think of I've sacrificed everything in that department for for the Houston Police Department it's all of it's documented. But when that wow. happened, you know, it, 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 it got to a point where they had no choice. And so things was getting pretty uh, heated for me. So I had no choice for my safety. So I just exited. But, uh, yeah. you know, but I think the most important thing uh, I want people to know, and I think, you know, all the experience that I went to is for this very moment, is because I, I want to I be sure, you know, I'm not a politician, but one thing I am, I'm all about justice. And what I came up with was some things that I was working on even when I was in the department. And we had to figure out ways, you know, when we talk about crime, uh, Brother Tariq, you, you and I both know crime doesn't have a, a race attached to it. A crime affects us all in every area, no matter how uh, rich you are or how poor you are. And the, the problem is, well, how can we uh, systematically approach crime wherever you are at any given time? And not only that, how can you identify police officers within these agencies who are race soldiers and not only yeah. that and then not, now we got to go deeper now once you identify these race soldiers or once or once you have a problem with crime or or whatever the issue is how can you effectively deal with it 
And now, let me ask you this, brother. Hold on. Let me ask you yes, this. Because out here in Los Angeles, Southern California, where I am, we have a major, major problem with white supremacist gangs within the departments here in the LAPD and the L.A. Sheriff's Department. How much of a problem is that in the Houston police? And what did you see in relation to that? Well, I, I can honestly say uh, this. I can't say. Within those twelve, I can't see this now. What's going on over there in in Los Angeles? That's on a whole nother level. Now I've never seen it to that degree in the in the Houston Police Department. Now, and I must say this: now after the stuff I did here with all these other departments, now Houston Police Department, you know, they got problems, but it ain't nowhere near what's going on with a lot of these other things. And I can, and I'm thankful right. for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, because it's sick out here, out here in California, man. You can't even get in certain de- police departments if you're not a part of these damn gangs. It's real bad out here in California. You know, they got the sheriff's dumb, um, the the sheriff of the um, L.A. Sheriff's Department, the chief, the head of it, Villanueva. He has to testify about those gangs pretty soon. So I'm, I'm keeping my eye out on that. But thank you for the call, brother. Let me get some more people in here because I'm not going to be here too too long ladies and gentlemen well i see willie low is back up in here well the r&b singer willie low what's up willie low i see you player um let me see we got a lot of folks in here um what's up supremo what no let me get supremo on here again supremo what happened to you supremo you you hopped off real quickly what's going on supremo Supremo. Okay. Your phone is still raggedy. Supremo. How are you a white man with such a raggedy phone, man? <laughs> you could use your whiteness. For... <laughs> I've never seen a white man with a raggedy phone like this. What's up, Supremo? What's up? What's up? Okay, what's on your what's what's on your mind, Mister Raggedy Phone? How much you bench? Okay, okay, I bench three hundred pounds in iPhones, and I'm gonna bench one to your ass because you need a new phone, dude. All right, let's get some other people in here. Let me see who is this sister here, let's Sage Laflame. Let's get Sage Laflame in here. Sage Laflame. That's who we gonna get in here. Hey Tariq, what's up? Hey Sage Laflame, how are you, dear? I'm good. I'm good. I saw that shit that you posted about the trans folks, and that just completely. I mean, it disgusted me just to yeah. see people now having this narrative of. Oh, um, basically, oh, black women don't deserve children. Like, how dare you? Right. Like, what right. is that supposed to mean? Are y'all going to really start attacking black women? And, oh, and, and are y'all going to be definitely snatching us up off the street talking about, oh, it's sex trafficking? Yeah, 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 man. You don't know. You don't know what's coming from a man. So, I, I got to get deep on one of my broadcasts, but thank you for the call, dear. Let's get the avenue on here. What's up, the Av? Oh yeah, the average black guy, man. It's an honor. It's an honor, okay. sir. My brother. Now, where you from, bro? Oh, I grew up in San Bernardino, California, Southern California, all my life. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, what's on your mind, sir? Well, um, first of all, what you were saying about the police departments and having like that initiation thing—it's incredibly true. I have a, a uncle who's been in law enforcement for like thirty years, but also a friend of mine. We worked in corporate security together. Worked with a bunch of ex-cops who could no longer be cops for obviously nefarious reasons. Um, yeah. And the more we dug deep into it, and I had people I knew dig into it, um, it was pretty messed up. But he became a cop later. My friend did. I ended up suing the corporation and getting a, getting a lot of money. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I to, to be honest, man, I, I got to give you a lot of credit for that. A lot of things that I learned from you, I had my email game on point. My text messages kept that up. And um, I was in a position where I got to see the structure. I only had three people above me. I had 800 subordinates and I became a troublemaker because I was helping my people out. And um, I definitely got to give you your credit on that. But 
my friend all of a sudden flipped on me. He kind of snuck me information that helped me win. And then when he decided to become a cop on his social media, he started supporting Trump and saying all kind of crazy stuff about Muslims. And my wow. wife is Muslim, man. And I'm like, I had to check him wondering what it was. He was letting people go at me. And I'm like, and he, he, he broke it down to me. He said, man, I have to be this person in order to, uh, you know, to be, he told me he got, he's trying to be an LAPD. And man. yeah, bro. Like, it got deep. Him to food training. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So yeah. I want to just say thank you for all that you do. And I definitely had to speak on it. I appreciate you, brother. Man, much respect to you, brother. That's heavy, man. I mean, look, they make you into a coon out here, man. I'm telling you, the LAPD is rotten to the core, dude. I'm telling you, I'm somebody who's dealt with these folks for years. That's what, there's a reason why Chris Dorner had to go out the way he went out. You know, Chris Dorner warned everybody how corrupt LAPD is, man. This shit is like a mafia organization out here is so bad. Yeah. Let me get, uh, who is this person in here? Okay, didn't I have you on already, Free Speech for a Black Man? Free Speech for a Black Man. I thought I had you on already. What's up, man? I want to salute you, B1, and Black First. And I wanted to do is, um, one, answer your question, and two, ask you a question myself. Did I do that? Go ahead. All right, thank you, brother. Go ahead. Um, off top, absolutely, we have to worry about fake rep reparations and such like that. I remember way back, they were trying to talk about such things as ridiculous as the NBA was reparations for black people. They, yeah, you know, yeah. and even right here on this phone call, you damn near got a phone chat, I, I beg your pardon, a, a, a fork chin Indian, you, you got tree hugging vegan, you got an all white try yeah. to hug you, and then you, and then you got all, all other kinds of agents of white supremo. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so it's real ridiculous on there. Now, if I want to ask you a question, well, I beg your pardon. All, all those people right there are just trying to, so trying to keep, trying to keep foundational Black Americans off the the agenda of reparations and tangible. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about, brother. I wanted to ask you about something. And I wanted to ask you something real quick, brother. Oh, uh, all right, real quick. My favorite superhero, Black superhero, was Black Dynamite. You know, smacking Elvis, Richard Nixon, and all that. But then, all right, yeah. you're from California, right? My black mm -hmm. superhero right now is Captain America. Well, I beg your pardon. The black Captain America and Nick Fury, when they bought that building in, in downtown LA that had the bank in it. Well, what I mean by that is that I beg your pardon, brother. I heard you talking about yourself, how you were having trouble trying to buy land and property in California. And real talk, if yeah. you could imagine Bernard Garrett and Joe Morris finding out that right now black people can't buy a mall in Crenshaw, even if they pay more than non-black people in their own damn neighborhood. As much as, I just wanted to ask you, what can we do? Or you, um, what can we do about getting tangibles? Because white supremacy has a where they lock us out of having money, where they could get on code and lock us out having money. It could be on some, it could be on some, we can't even get a scoop, of, a, a scoop of ice cream because, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't want to take our cotton picking money. And I, and I beg your pardon, brother. Um, when when I'm on these Twitter spaces, I just reference, you know, the um um uh, uh, I beg your pardon. Um, um, God bless, um, Claude Anderson, John Henry Clark, and on um, this regard, um, I mentioned the um the video by Jason Black. Okay, bro, okay, bro. Let me answer your question because you don't seem like you're about to land that plane pretty soon. All right, so let me answer your question, brother. Thank you so much. I had to get my man off because my man did. A good brother just don't know how to land his plane. This brother was changing subjects. He's going all over the place. So let me reel it back. Um, yeah, man, look, we are out here in California, dude. It, it, this real funny style out here. It is not like other places, dude. Even if you got money to get some popping, these folks don't give a damn. They'll shut you up out of this thing. Um, as you see what we're going through right now in the Crenshaw District. These people are being rigid about not selling none of that property to black people. This is the struggle we're going through now. We're going into these situations out here in Los Angeles with cash in hand. And these folks are turning us away, um, selling the property for less money to other people. They're doing this repeatedly. So we, we, we're still both being focused. 
we're still being focused. I mean, we've had about three or four deals on the table. We're ready to close deals and always something comes up with these folks out here. That's why with the museum, we were thinking about a push comes to shove. We were doing it in Atlanta. Um, that's a very last resort type of thing because, you know, down in Atlanta, you got some of the moist street gangs that's running around Midtown. So that's scary. <laughs> but uh, that's a whole new thing I'm not used to. When I go to Atlanta, some of the stuff that I see, I am not used to it. So we, we we really, really want the joint out here. But again, if push comes to shove, we'll have to get it in Atlanta. But hopefully we'll get another property opening up out here so we can get that museum popping. Um, what's up? Let me get Sonny G in here. Let's get the homie Sonny. What's up, Sonny? Hop on, play. Out. Flex, what's good, family? I'm good, man. What's it's going good, on? It's good. It's good. So everything is good, man. Nice to hear from you again, man. I think that with... Uh, you know, when we're talking about phony reparations bills, we definitely need to be specific and concise. Um, what, what I don't like is the, the trick back language um, I'm starting to hear come out of California. I think we need to be specific when we're, you know, talking about classification. When we're digging up, uh, looking at genealogy records uh, with our people, I'm, we're, we're speaking, you know, they they label themselves as black. And I think that we have to go specifically to, you know, what they were designated and classified as. And I don't, I, I'm not feeling you know, too comfortable about the African-American thing, but I think that we need to draft up a bill uh, and, ma and make it, you know, uh, you know, pretty much nationwide and give them, you know, our demands and, you know, what we asking for and things like that. And it, it shouldn't be something where they get to pick and choose what, what is tangible and what is not tangible because, right. you know, it, it right. you know, they go, you know, pretty much everywhere. But what do you, what do you think about, you know, us, making uh, our reparations task force uh, lineage based. That'd be my question for you, family. All right. Thank you so much, bro. Let me answer that. Um, yeah, we absolutely should be lineage based. That's what we were doing out here in California. We made them um, designate that whatever reparations is going to come down is going to be based on lineage, not race. We're not going to sit here and share reparations with all of these different groups. I don't care about them claiming that it's divisive because they're the main ones who divided themselves from us. None of these other groups helped us. Some of these other groups are descended from the folks who sold some of us. So no, you're not going to get a part of the reparations claim because you're not a part of that lineage. You're not a part of the people who built this country from scratch. We are a very unique people. We are very exceptional people. and We have a very specific lineage that other people do not have. And we're not going to play the minority coalition share game because don't nobody share a damn thing with us at all. And these are just facts. Nobody shares anything with us. We don't owe nobody nothing. Everybody over here, they've gotten enough off of us. They're eating good, living good off of us. That's why certain people, I don't even want them questioning what we do. If you're over here from another place you fled from, don't even question us, man. Sit down and enjoy all the goodies that you're getting based on the free labor our families put in. You already getting yours. If it weren't for foundational black Americans, y'all be stuck somewhere back in your homeland, scratching your ass, twerking for a green card. Y'all going to put some respect on foundational black Americans. We are an exceptional group. We are not like other groups and we are not African-American. That's a term we really got to back away from. We got used to using that term starting in the 80s. Now, some people might say, well, there were black people using that term back in the 1700s. Yeah, there was a few people using the term. Very, very few. But generally, people didn't call themselves African-American really until the 80s in large numbers. They were doing that in the 80s. And the only reason they started doing that is some think tanks sent the word down to the left wingers and gave the, the call to Jesse Jackson to start designating us as African-American to make us comparable to immigrant groups, which we are not. We are. The, there's nothing African-American about us. We are foundational black American. We have our own unique culture and everybody knows it. 
all right? And we're not doing any fake pan-Africanisms no more. We've done that already. It doesn't work. It's been too one-sided. Pan-Africanism does not work. It doesn't work because we're the only ones upholding it. Other groups are not trying to do any type of pan-Africanism with us in large numbers. Now, that's either true or false. If they were if they were trying to get something going on with us, they would be like, hey, man, we got a plot of land over here just for you guys. Hey, guys, y'all can come over here to the Caribbean or Africa. Y'all can get dual citizenship. We're going to fight for dual citizenship for you or we're going to fight to get you some land grants so y'all can come over here and be with the family. None of them have done that in large numbers. I'm not talking about for a few individual people, but in large numbers. None of these countries have done that, dude. Let's keep it a buck. Don't let nobody lie to you. Ain't nobody trying to be on no Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism means they come over here and eat off us. And my plate is empty. I'm making a plate for myself right now. And y'all stop being ashamed to roll like that. Everybody else roll like that. When they come over here, they are shameless about getting stuff for their group. But when we say we need to get some for us, they try to shame us. Well, you niggas are divisive. You niggas are a hit group. Us telling people to hold their own nuts. This is how entitled people are. If we don't let them leech off us, we're a hate group. Just let that sink in. This is how entitled and used people used to eating off us people have gotten. It's a sick dynamic, but we sat up here and let it go on too damn long. Well, no more. Let's get this person in here. Let's get King Moses. King Moses, King Moses, King Moses. What's up, King Moses? King yeah, Moses. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are Good, you? How you doing? Yeah, I just got uh, one I'm... question. Um, yeah, I support the whole reparation movement, whatever. But I got a question about uh, the Liberians specifically. Like, I'm not Liberian, but you know how, uh, the, at, like, what's it called? The American Liberian, how they sent the, some ships back. Yeah. yeah. So since um, I just found out recently, apparently it was a program. So it said the African, the, the black Americans, the slaves who were here, had to be able to read and write to be able to qualify to get set back. So say one of their descendants over there starts trying to claim reparations. What would your position be on that? No, 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 we're not doing it because people try to throw the Liberia thing in there. There's so many caveats to the Liberia thing. Number one, they were sending free black people over there to Liberia. They weren't sending any slaves over there for the, for the most part. They were also sending Caribbeans over there. Also, other people from different African countries were over there. So there was a lot of clashing going on because of the differences of cultures. One thing Foundation of Black Americans did was help stop the slave trade over there. That was another thing. Yeah. And try to bring some justice and order over there. But ultimately, everything didn't click the way it was, it was supposed to click because we ain't from no damn Liberia, first of all. We yeah. were born over there. So that was a cluster flop from day one but that whole liberia thing that's something if there's a person who went back and forth in the 1800s that's that we call those specialty orders you're gonna have to sit uh, in the car and wait for them to bring your order out to them after uh, we get our reparations claim yeah i feel that because um yeah because i'm just recently doing research and it because people have like some of their grandkids have paperwork of their like ancestors leaving like salem and stuff like that so i'm like so what happens if they just start saying you know what i'm gonna claim yeah. this Okay, yeah, yeah. See, go ahead and sit their ass down. That's what they're going to do. Sit in the car. We'll bring their order out to them later. That's what we're doing with that. Thank for the calls. Yeah, so that's right, another thing. thing. When it comes to us getting reparations, notice how people, not saying this, brother, but other people, they start coming in to try to complicate it. Well, I had a cousin. What if my great, 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 great uncle lived in Cuba and then he had came over here in 1833 is he a foundation of black American? They want to play that game. They want to play with well, my, I got a cousin who came from Haiti. I got a, they want to play that game. Half of my family came from the Barbados. Is that what I mean? And I'm kin to Rihanna. And then I had a, a cousin twice removed who had came over here. And then they swam over here. Did he, 
become a foundational black American. These are specialty orders. Y'all niggas are not going to hold the line up with that. See, that's what they want to do. They want to come and hold the reparations line up with all of these specialty cases. Look, we're making it very simple. Your documents should go back to the 1870 census. Some people say the 1900 census. I say go back to the 1870 census. That's what I say. Let's take it all the way back because I can trace both. Nobody in my family is an immigrant. So I'm good money either way. I got all my paperwork ready. I say we should go to the 1870 census so you know who's for show FBA. But 1900, and we can roll with that too because there weren't too many immigrants over here as far as black immigrants. But yeah, you have to trace your lineage back to that census. Simple as that. And if your family's name was on that census and it can be traced that this was legitimately your family, you good to go. You FBA, you good. But all of these specialty cases, nah, y'all take that somewhere. You're not about to hold the line up. They want to hold everybody else's payments up with these little jive-ass specialty cases. No, we ain't doing that. Listen, I want a reparation check, but I, I come from another galaxy. I'm from the planet Pluto. But I, I lived in Ghana in the 1800s, and I transported back to the mushroom planet, and then I came back to America. Okay, stop it. No, we're not doing that. Let's see. Let's get um Doglon Millionaire. What his name is okay. Dodge. What's that? Dodge Lon Millionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had. I had a quick question, right? So, go ahead, we can brother. Trace the reparations claim back to the eighteen seventy census to basically see if you was eligible, right? I, right. We, you know, during the slave during slavery, right? Our ancestors wasn't allowed to read and write, so how how would that honestly work? If you know what I mean, so like, I mean, I, I'm just confused there. If you could if you could answer that and tell me how that would possibly work, it would, sir. It would work because you didn't have to be able to read or write to be listed on the census. The census takers would just count you, and they would document you. you got it? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for that. There you go. All right, brother. Um, I know it's not the first of the month yet, and some of y'all are getting a lot of that dirt weed. Leave that dirt weed alone because they're cutting it with all types of stuff. Leave the bad um, end of the month drugs alone, guys, because they're cutting it. They're stepping on that dope real bad, man. They, they're cutting it with fentanyl, and you can hear it in some of the voices of the people that's calling. Okay. So y'all leave that stepped on ass dope alone, man, and just wait till the first of the month so you can get your nice good bump. So you get your high on, get your smoke on the way you need to get your smoke on, man. All right, let's get a couple of more people in here. Um, all right. A lot of folks in here. Raise those hands, family. Raise those hands. We're holding steady. Um, a lot of lovely sisters in here. Shout out to the lovely sisters. Sisters be cute as hell, boy. I'll be seeing your asses. Like, God damn, that's a cute sister right there. Then I look at my queen. I'm like, oh, shit. There's my wife right there. I hope she didn't see me looking at this mother like <laughs> But there's some cute sisters out here. How y'all doing? Shout out to you, sisters. All right. Let's, um... <laughs> Let's get, um... Who is this? Let me see. Let's get um brother in here, brother low. Brother low in here. What's up, brother low? B one family. How you doing? What's up, man? How are you? How you doing? I'm brother? good. I'm good. All right, what's on your mind? Uh, I want to get back on the topic. Uh, I, I think we should keep an eye on these phony reparations claim because no one has passed anything yet. Right, 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 right. They're doing a lot of promises and they're talking about, um, yeah, we're going to look into it. Yeah, we support it, but nobody's talking about actually 
passing anything that's tangible. That's absolutely true. See, we got to watch the trick words. Like I said earlier, they're dangling a carrot in front of us saying, hey, if you vote for us, we're going to really support reparations. And I'm saying support it now. You, many of you are already in office. You're already an elected official. So do something right now. Let's get some tangibles going right now. I'm not going to sit here and vote and then hope you do something. No, get something going. Pay first. Purse first, ass last. That's how you got to do it. Blockchain Fox. Let's get Blockchain Fox in here. Blockchain, hop in Blockchain Fox. He's turning his microphone on. Blockchain Fox, where you at? Yo, what's up? Thanks. What's up, brother? Where you, where you calling from, sir? Um, I'm out here in Hawaii. Oh, there you go. Are you living there or are you visiting Hawaii? Oh, I live here. Oh, okay. Now, where are you from originally? Chicago. There you go. Are you in the military? No, I'm not. What made you move to Hawaii? Yeah, I opened up a company when I um, lived in Wisconsin. And then... Um, I had to come out towards this way. I was trying to get somebody from my company to move out this way, but I couldn't. Did nobody want to pick up and leave? So I did it. Brought my two kids, and I've been here ever since. Now, what, what's your company? What do you do? What do I do? Well, I'm a developer. Yeah, what's your company? Okay. There Engineering. All right. Okay. All right. So what's on your mind, bro? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um. I think you do got to watch it for the reparations. I was seeing some stuff with, um, I think it was the mayor of Philadelphia and somebody else, and they was talking about reparations, not only for just um, foundational blacks, but for everybody, which I totally disagree with. Right, right. Yeah, that's one of the biggest contentions that we've been having with all of these other people trying to latch on to the reparations claim. And we're saying, no, we're not doing that. This is a lineage-based claim, and that's what it is. All right, let's get some more folks in here. Let's get um, Terrence. Terrence, did I have you on already, Terrence? I could have swore I had Terrence on already. Terrence, I had you on already, right? Terrence, turn your microphone on, sir. And then let me see when we get Terrence. And then I get a couple of because I ain't gonna be on here. I keep saying I ain't gonna be on here long, and then my ass end up on here real long. Terrence, what's up, Terrence? All right, Terrence is up here. His microphone ain't working. All right, let's get Holland in here real quick. Let me make everybody hop on real quick. Holland, what's up, brother? I'm good. What's on your mind, sir? Look, I'm going to tell you, man, you open my eyes on some real stuff, man. Like, I was one of them dudes that's like, man, yo, I'm definitely going to uh, vote. I got to pay a, pay big ups and homage to my family, to my to my ancestors. And I'm like, man, that's such the that's a, the biggest sucker move I could, I've ever seen, man. It's crazy. You're 100% right. If they're not giving us any reparations, any tangibles, then we shouldn't be voting. If there's no bills, there's nothing that's that's physically for us to get. I don't want to hear it. And it, absolutely. And the second thing is, to be honest, man, I don't understand why people don't realize how easy it is to look up your ancestry. I'm born and raised in South Carolina. My grandfather and my yeah. grandmother was born in Charleston, right? So I mean, my people is get you go. Yo, my I look back, found my great 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 grandfather Anderson Barnes, born in 1826. He's one of the 50 people that's on a slave record owned by a man by the name of John Barnes, who owned my great, great, great grandfather on the slave record. It has all of them. Twenty six years old, 60 years old, five years old, 11 years old. You can see the actual records of the slaves. So, yeah, you ain't got to write nothing down or have no no penmanship. That doesn't matter, man. They already knew who was there. So, yeah, it, it's not hard at all to find your legacy define your heritage and to be honest man it's a uh, it's real some people still look at it as depressing man i don't want to go back to my people look like that 
dude, it's uplifting. Look, look at what you came from. Yeah. Look at look at what you survived yeah. from. So just saying that to say, man, keep doing what you're doing, man. Don't let these people throw no monkey wrenching and stuff, dude. We all gotta work, we all gotta live. So how you make and do yours, you do that, big dog. Big up. No doubt. Much respect, brother. So yeah, man. Yeah, don't let nobody shame us, man. Look, our family, they survived one of the greatest atrocities in recorded history. And not only that, they many of them fought back. Speaking of South Carolina, and I'm doing a movie, man. I'm working on a movie right now. We're doing the editing about the Maroons here on this land that was whooping ass for centuries that's never talked about. We got, this is going to be on our new streaming service and it's going to be a four part miniseries because I've a lot of our films, we've had to edit a lot of stuff out. If you watch some of my old films, some of, some of my other documentaries, a lot of the stuff even though they're long films and most of them are two hours and 30 minutes, but we had to keep it under three hours in order to get them in movie theaters and even in order to get them on the damn DVD. But now we're going to go through our own streaming service. So now we ain't cutting all of that good stuff out. We're leaving all the good stuff in. Um, Yeah, we're, it's going to be like, um, one hour episodes, four one hour episodes, man. Just nothing but hot fire. I can't wait for y'all to see this new film, man. Okay, let's get King in here. I hear my brother rambling. He's rambling around. What's up, King? Can you hear me, brother? I can hear you. How are you, King John? Oh, I'm good, brother. Oh, man. I just, it's an honor to speak to you always, man. I appreciate everything you're doing for our people. Um, yes, you are the man with the master plan, man. You and Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, yeah. as far as these fake reparations, these people could just go to hell, man. At this point, you know, these people worked us to death, you know, brutalized us in every which way. And like you said, man, just to be so ungrateful, man, you know, especially like these, uh, these, these people from, from different, you know, African and Caribbean countries, man, it's, it's just ridiculous, you know, how they feel about us. And, and, you know, but that was one thing. And then another thing I want to say, cause we're going to get our money cause we getting on code and I definitely got to give a shout out to you and all of the brothers in the black media who have done that. Yes. Um, what can we do as far as, because with you, brother, you can galvanize us to do things that I don't think that, you know, very few people can do. Basically, how can we get our, pool our money and start making money where it's kind of like um, where the grassroots people are starting to make a lot of money and then we can really start getting things going so like whenever you want to do like a museum or whatever you know there's hundreds of us who have hundreds of thousands of dollars at a at a drop of a dime or or millions of us because you should be a billionaire honestly you know what i'm saying and it's kind of like that's I, i i know you have so much going on but i just wanted to say like Maybe that's something that you can think about. Like, just I know, um, what's the brother's name? Um, the one who's, who you you had to kind of clown for a minute, plebiscite Allen. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, but we're, yeah, yeah, but like, just something where we can kind of start pooling our money and start making money and doing things like that. That way, you know, the the people who are on code, we can start just making things happen. And I mean, I know, yeah touch on that thank you for the call but yeah that's what we're doing now we just have to continue it man we have to start taking pride in doing business with other black people i try to go out of my way to find black people to do business with i really go out of my way to find black folks to do business with black clothing stores black restaurants food spots um um is a brother that i use out here he's he owns a junk removal truck and I use him all the time. I make sure that I call him because I'm always throwing stuff away. There's all, you know, I got a bunch of kids. So we're always throwing things away, hauling off old furniture. So just every little thing, just little stuff like that, man. You find some black folks who's running a business and then you do business with them. 
You understand? It's that simple. I go out of my way to do that. I, I try to find black folks who got some stuff popping, but we do as black folks when we do business. We have to do quality business. Let's not just use, don't put your blackness out there and you strong on the blackness and weak on the service. You're running around talking about how black owned you are, but your service is crappy. No, you got to give good quality service. Being a black person, see, we think we can get a pass by kind of being half-assed sometimes with black folks. Oh, these black folks, they'll support me because we black. It's that type of mentality. No, we have to start going above and beyond for each other. We got to go out of our way to give top quality. That's why, you know why my films are so successful? My documentary films be outselling the documentary films from major studios because I film my movies the same way the big budget studios do. I sometimes use the same people. We use the same equipment. I go out of my way to make sure that my films have big budget, major studio quality to them. That's very important. I mean, every little thing, I'm big on making the sound crisp, the the visuals crisp. We're using top grade cameras, top grade lighting, um, special effects people. That's why it takes a long time because I'm not just going to put something together and just throw it out there. Black folks deserve quality education and entertainment, and that's what I provide. So we have to start taking pride in our work like that. When you take pride in your work, you're going to stand out. One of my favorite producers in the music game is DJ Quick. I love DJ Quick. Why is DJ Quick so respected? DJ Quick is a stickler for quality of sound. If you listen to DJ Quick, Quick's records, he has some of the best mixed records that's out there. Some of his records, the way they are mixed is incredible. The mix of a record is important to me. I hate to hear whack quality records that's not mixed right. Listening to somebody mix a record where they take time to really sound it out and build the sound and make the sound full. Dr. Dre is good with that too, but Quick and Dr. Dre are phenomenal. Quick, you know, he mixed a lot of those Tupac records, you know, some of those classics, and he he mixes a lot of other people's stuff. They bring him in just to mix stuff. You know, you take pride in the quality of the stuff that you put out. I want us to have that mentality. You know, having pride in what we do, having pride in what we put out, knowing that we're we're going to give the black audience above and beyond because they deserve it. A lot of times when it when it comes to doing business with other black folks, we think we can just put some half-ass foot forward and that's going to be good enough. Well, they'll still come to me because I'm the only deal in town. It's that type of mentality. No. Go above and beyond. That's why I, I, I rock with Tyler Perry. A lot of people have an issue with him, but Tyler Perry, I like Tyler Perry because Tyler Perry, his stage plays, some of his movies are kind of questionable. But at least his stage plays, that was his initial bread and butter. He puts on excellent stage plays. I give him that. That's one thing I really like about Tyler Perry. I took my mother to one of those Madea plays and she enjoyed it. The family enjoyed it. Those are put together phenomenally. And I take my hat off to him. Now, when it gets into the movies, there's some janky stuff that goes on. That's That's a little, you know. That's some, but my man is used to doing the the stage play thing, but you got to transfer that to, that energy into other endeavors that you do. All right, let me get one more call in here. Let me get one more call because I'm going overboard here, and we got a family photo session tomorrow. All right, so let's get one more call in here. Who is this artist? Seven, seven the MC. All right, we got seven the MC in here. Seven? Yes, sir, man. B1, SBA, 2A, all my other fucking day. What's up, Flex? Yes, indeed. What's on your mind, brother? Yes, sir. Love what you're saying about uh, SBA, and definitely I agree with the 1870 deadline more than the 1900 because of me, myself, I consider myself SBA, but 1 16th of, of my, my lineage. Um, I believe like a great, great, great grandfather came from the Congo uh, with a white woman trying to escape King Leopold. And then oh, damn. I look back 
and I see like there's a lot of Indian reservations in my background as well. So that black indigenous thing is serious. Um, and then the code, the code that you talk about, that code is, is so ridiculously important, cannot be understated because we've been too open with everybody trying to be loving while also having this warrior spirit where we fight harder for everybody, for ourselves, just running always, slaving and tired. Meanwhile, here we are, what, 13% of the population, such a minority outnumbered by white people, four and five to one, and black people in other countries, in their own countries, they outnumber their oppressors 20 to one, and we got all this fighting us, and they can't overcome their oppressors, and they outnumber them by so much, and that fight ain't there, yeah. that heart ain't right. And I'm like, how dare you speak against black people here when we fought these insurmountable odds and still keep fighting with our chest out, our balls out, creating all of this art, this beautiful art, and with that that spirit of love still, and you look down upon us and in your own country, there's Chinese, there's yeah. Indians, there's whites running it, raping it, and ravaging it, all to be damned. And here we are fighting for these reparations to actually take that fighting spirit and put some true money behind it and ingenuity to make us truly better. And we still want to share, hell no, nah. love who you are, Watch all your, your videos. You're building the self-esteem of a nation. And you're definitely, that code cannot be understated. Don't share. We have no friends. It's all about us. All, all day. Yes. I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Much respect, family. Man, that's real talk, man. Look, we, we don't owe nobody nothing as foundational black Americans. We don't owe nobody nothing, man. We've done enough. It's time for us to pull up a plate for ourselves. We should have pulled that plate up a long time ago. We're the only group who who try to they try to shame us for pulling up a plate for ourselves. Like we're just the designated group to have to feed everybody. We can't do anything unless we're feeding and sharing every little crumb that we have with everybody. Damn that black foundational black Americans. Don't let nobody try to shame you. Don't let nobody try to troll you. We're telling people to hold their own nuts. We're not even talking about harming people. We're telling people, go over there and do you. And people are whining and crying because we're telling them to just do things for themselves and we'll do things for us. And notice how everybody is crying foul. How can you do this to us? How can you not let me leech off you anymore? That, that's really what they're saying. That's their argument. They try to come up with these straw man arguments. Well, you guys are a hate group. You niggas hate us. Why do you hate us so much? You niggas hate us. We hate them. They, this is their logic. They're saying because we want them to just handle their own business and we'll handle ours, that equates us hating them. You see how asinine that logic is? And they try to shame us into taking care of them. No. Take care of yourself. If you think I hate you so much, well, go your ass over there. Get away from the hate. Why are you up in our mix if we hate you so damn much? Go and do you. And you don't have to worry about all of this perceived hate. Do you. But see, they have to try to gaslight us and stay in our mix. They have to center themselves around us because they know they're not going to cut it on their own. They know they've been riding for free with us. All of these groups know it. Why do y'all think they have such a problem with us designating who we are on our own terms? They designate us all the time in a negative sense. They're always othering us. Look at those Akatas. Look at those Yankee niggas. Look at those Abids. Look at those Jadirs. They got every derogatory name you can think of for us. And they other us all the time. They make sure to let white mommy and white daddy know that they ain't one of us. They different from us. And now that we are agreeing with them, we're saying, you know what? You're right. We You, you are different from us. Hey, hey, ho, 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 no, nigga. We're African-American. We're all in these together, nigga. No, we're not. No, we're not. Let's all keep that same energy. Everybody hold their own nuts. 
because we've taken the capes off. The cape don't work for us no more. I'm Clark Kent again. I'm no longer Superman. Lois Lane can go to hell. I'm Clark Kent right now. The Superman capes are off for me. And that's the mindset that we got to have, family. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. Everybody else got that mindset. They're looking out for their group. We're looking out for ours. FBA all day. First. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all go check out my book, man. Y'all want to get some more game? Y'all really want to soak up some game? Y'all want to get that thing rough, rugged, raw, uncut? Get my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta, my new book, right now on Amazon. You go to Amazon, it'll get delivered to you tomorrow. Order it on Amazon. Go to Amazon, type in Foundational Black American Race Beta. Excellent book to have. A lot of game in that book. That'll help you understand racial politics out here. Also, go to officialfba.com. Get your maroon flag shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Repping FBA all day. Full blood FBA. All right, y'all. Y'all be good, man. And in the words of our foundational Black American ancestors, Papiakute and Lola Vuve to the family. Peace.